you may begin. Thank you very much. I want to welcome everybody to the Township of Georgian Bay's Committee of the Whole meeting of Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. And I'd like to call this meeting to order at 1.03 p.m. I gave a rather lengthy land acknowledgement um, statement this morning, so I'm going to do a, a much briefer version this afternoon. And that is in the spirit of reconciliation, we wish to acknowledge the enduring relationship between Indigenous people and the territories they traditionally occupied. We recognize and deeply appreciate the historic connection they have to this place, the land, the water, the sky, and all that live in it, on it, under it. We are grateful for the opportunity to meet here. And we thank all the generations of Indigenous people who have taken care of this place. And we want to show our respect. Hundreds of years after the first treaties were signed, they remain relevant today. May they guide our decisions and actions. We commit to learn, to educate, to honor sacred places, and to take actions toward real truth and reconciliation. Miigwech. Um, I was wondering if there are any declarations of pecuniary interest that uh, anyone feels that they should be declaring at this time or conflicts of interest per our uh, code of conduct. Seeing none, I will then move on to the first resolution of the day, moved by, he's not here yet, so I'll say move, move by Councillor Douglas, seconded by Councillor Jarvis. Be it resolved that the Committee of the Whole does hereby adopt the May 11th, 2021 agenda as circulated. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. All right. We, I was in, already advised by um, our clerk that there has been no open forum items. And Councillor Bocek, I believe I see your hand, or is that a vote? It's gone, so I presume that was a vote in favor of the last round. Yes, it was, sorry. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Um, you know, apparently I have a habit of every so often missing people's hands, so I appreciate the reminders and just want to check. Um, so the first item on our agenda for discussion, I believe has to do with regards to, um, hang on here, now I'm looking at the wrong page. I'll be, you all know what we have to do. We have to talk about the development services report on the VIN site transition. And I believe that is Ms. Lemieux. Over to you, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so uh, as you probably had some chance to go through the report, um, just a quick overview, because I know we'll probably get to more actual discussions on it, so I won't take too long. Uh, from the offset, but essentially this report provided uh, a general overview of the process to date um, and try to uh, compile, you know, as much information as I was able to into one document, just for simplicity purposes for uh, committee to, to, to use as, um, as kind of a base document, which hopefully um, was helpful to many of you. Uh, in addition, um, it provided a current policy framework um, as well as outline some concerns and also the general planning application process that was um, requested to be provided, I believe at the last CAL meeting where we had this discussion. Um, and resulting from my review um, on the BIN site transition plan and where I can see planning being able to provide a role, um, I have um, put forward a recommendation for Committee of the Whole to consider um, which would essentially result in two actionable items being brought forward to uh, district, well, if council then were to pass them, uh, to bring forward two actionable items to district EPW committee to uh, number one, commence a public survey process, which is required in regards to the Go Home Lake um, location that is proposed. And that piece is something that does have to happen as part of the rezoning application anyways, but it would be nice to see this happen now um, to take advantage of the seasonal uh, population, you know, be, being up in the area and being able to um, ensure we get um, the greatest number of uh, participants in that survey requirement, as well as the second item is to commence a site selection exercise, 
uh, for the Honey Harbor and um, additional communities as noted, um, which hopefully will be able to commence um, quite quickly because that could end up becoming quite a detailed process. And I believe um, that's something that definitely needs to be done. You know, looking out to where <laughs> this whole situation could lay for our township, um, making sure that that baseline work is done um, in the sense of looking at potential sites in Honey Harbor. Um, and, and again, just commencing that work now. So the resulting recommendation in front of you today does include those two actual items. Uh, I'm open to some questions and comments now. Um, again, just trying to keep it brief because I know we'll get into the weeds um, on it. So please let me know uh, what questions or comments you have. Thank you. I just want to say before I hand it over to council that uh, I, for one, and I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us, greatly appreciate all the work you've done on this, uh, Victoria. And uh, even though we may ask many questions, all that, uh, I think you've given us a a good point to for, for which to start our our conversation today, and so thank you. I saw Councillor Jarvis's hand go up, followed by Councillor Hazelton. I'm going to jump right down to uh, Victoria, right down to the, the next steps recommendation there. Um, I note, of course, uh, that it's required that we get a survey out for the Go Home Lake community. I understand that. Um, I, I presume that if if in uh, in number two, you after going through the exercise of determining where a site should be in and around uh, the township, uh, another survey will go out uh, similar to the Go Home Lake one that will be sort of the same vein. Um, I'm wondering, I, I, I know there's been a significant amount of input from all over the place on this. Is it worthwhile getting a survey out um, before we go through that planning process, <laughs> just thinking that maybe people have some ideas that they really haven't come to mind with us or the planning department or wherever yet that may come out of the woodwork. Uh, should we get a survey out uh, before we seem to have uh, finalized um, the other sites uh, for garbage disposable disposal? I'm I, and I am, of course, I'm very very concerned like everybody else about this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think you can respond. Go. I was going to say, I think he was. <laughs> he yeah, was I was saying, Ms. Lemieux, uh, can, okay. if you could read lips. Um, um, and by the way, just if Ms. Lemieux, feel free to respond to people without me having to recognize you. We, we like to be a little more informal in Committee of the Whole. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so to Councillor Jarvis, I agree. Um, I anticipate the site selection exercise will be done, obviously, primarily by the district and their consultant because at the end of the day, it will be them submitting any applications relevant to any potential new sites, et cetera. We will be taking a large role in that. And from some preliminary discussions with the planning department there, as well as just you know the waste management team, um, I foresee there being some sort of public input session as part of that initial exercise to be done regardless. I think that, that I can't see that process moving forward without something like that. However, once they narrow down to, let's say, just for example, three sites, that's when we're going to go into, you know, open house sessions, like more uh, distinct and um, kind of a, an actual open forum public consultation process, not just a survey. Um, so I agree. It's, it's well heard. And um, that's definitely something that us as township staff will ensure happens, because obviously we know that the community members are the ones that have the local knowledge to, to provide that input to the consultant in the district. So hopefully that that helps. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hazelton. Followed by Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mayor Kutzer. I have a few questions, if I may. Um, and I'll start off with, uh, first of all, thank you, Victoria, for assembling this. Um, gathering all the pieces together is a challenge. Um, and uh, so you've certainly done a good job of pulling a lot of things together. Uh, there's a few other things that um, I would like to see in this, but um, I'll uh, defer that to another time. Um, on the bottom of page five of 32 in your report, um, not that your report's 32 pages long, but I'm looking at the uh, Committee of the Whole package. Um, you talk about um, township items that uh, 
uh, are kind of outstanding and you highlight uh, four items that are outstanding. And I'm wondering um, uh, why we would entertain uh, attempting to advance anything further when we don't have the answers to those items that have been outstanding since May and October of, uh, of 2020. Um, because in, in my opinion, anyways, those are, are critical steps uh, to, to cover. That was sort of a rhetorical question. Um, I, I, I would like to get back to that a little bit later, but I, I think what, what is, um, what's important uh, from my perspective in this whole um, process of trying to deal with uh, waste is um, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> with respect to the, uh, the idea of a go home lake site, um, which by the way, I'm not against, uh, I could fully support it. Um, but what I think we need to understand before we think about that, or before we think about any other site selections, if there, if that is a process is what are these sites going to cost, uh, the taxpayers in the area or the township in general? Uh, and so, for example, let's say that you put in uh, a district-run waste transfer site at Go Home Lake. Now you're going to have district staff managing that, and that's going to essentially be a third transfer site in the township. So we have one on South Bay Road. It's manned. We have one uh, up at 12 Mile Bay Road, apparently, and uh, it's manned. And there are certain hours that are available, but that's a district-run site. And there are going to be costs, exorbitant costs, uh, from the district to run extended hours and things like that. And so, from my perspective, if the folks on Go Home Lake want to uh, have that quality and kind of service, which is essentially a premium service, uh, if you will, uh, and they want to pay for it, then that's fine. Uh, we have talked uh, amongst ourselves in the past of marina operated private bin sites. And of course, the, uh, the statements that you've got down on the bottom of that uh, page that I highlighted um, deal with outstanding matters that we need answers to before we can find out if there is a reasonable uh, play for a private marina operated uh, transfer site. Um, I will share uh, with the group here, perhaps Councillors Cooper and Jarvis and I haven't uh, provided a full report, although staff do have uh, a copy of the communication that we uh, circulated amongst ourselves and with MECP talking about what might be needed for a marina based bin, a tr a bin transfer site. Uh, and uh, MECP are fully supportive of it. Uh, the only outstanding matters are actually the two items listed at the bottom of that page five of 32, uh, the uh, two items that uh, were brought forward in October. So. Um, actually, the, the three items, the May 13th and the October 14th. So if we had those answers, we would actually be able to build, uh, sorry, we would actually be able to work with uh, and have the marina operators build out a business plan that they could say, yeah, this makes sense for me as a marina and this is an option I can go with. Um, but we don't have those answers. And so uh, I think we are very much uh, the cart before the horse right now in this process and these recommendations. Um, uh, further, the second and that clause uh, talks about the idea of site selection for Honey Harbor and some of the other inland communities. And I'm thinking, uh, well, wait a minute, Six Mile Lake and uh, to a large degree, I think Gloucester Pool, these are all properties that have uh, um, roadside pickups. Uh, so, are we talking about transitioning them away from roadside pickup into uh, a site selection for those areas? I mean, I, I don't know that, but um, I, I, I think what's more important for that second and that clause is, is a, transfer, is a site selection uh, in the Honey Harbor area a viable option, period? And there's been all kinds of comments that we have received from people in the community, et cetera, where a site selection uh, idea is a fail before we start. Um, and uh, so let me just kind of throw out an example. 
let's say we pick the Honey Harbor public school, the old one that uh, um, may be an available site at some point in time in the future. Maybe we could, you know, entertain uh, picking it up as, as a township. And so it's a, a chunk of land that maybe it's a, a place where you could uh, build a transfer site. And it doesn't matter whether it's that or the parking lot of Village of Marine or some other place in that area. But in order to do that, you would then have to have mega docks available and you would have to understand queuing theater, the, the, uh, queuing, queuing theory to understand how the arrival of boats is going to take place and how people are going to actually be able to use that to get rid of their garbage. And um, unless you have it as a fully manned uh, site, perhaps with students with uh, ATVs and trailers running out to the trailer to get, get, grab that garbage and bring it back to the site, you're likely going to have a big fail. Otherwise, you're going to be building an entire marina dock structure to handle all the people coming in uh, who want to get rid of their garbage at the same time. So I think before we even think for one second about this, these concepts, we need to understand if there is a site like a go home that people think might be useful, what's it going to cost? Because you can't ask people, do you like this? If you don't tell them this is going to cost each of you a thousand dollars a year on your taxes to manage that site. Similarly in Honey Harbor, uh, if we don't have a viable option, in other words, if people getting out of their boats with their garbage don't have any practical way of getting that garbage to a transfer site uh, and really do need a bin site, then we're we're wasting our time talking about these site selection concepts when that could be a fail before we start. And I'll pause after this next statement. I see that you've got all expenses to be paid by the district. Well, guess what? Anything the district pays for, we get billed for. So that's a, that's a fallacy. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, we need to uh, expect up front that uh, we're going to pay for it. And my guess is it might be cheaper for us to pay for it directly than to pay the district and their overheads to then in fact do something uh, and probably not to even do the things that we want them to do because they haven't done a good job of that so far. I think that um, you know if we're trying to solve this problem, we need to take ownership for our residents' interests and ensure that we have a viable option and right now, I'm not seeing anything out of the district that is a viable option um, at a cost structure that we're likely to be able to afford. But having said that, without those motions from May or uh, from 2020 uh, being solved and provided, we're just shooting in the dark here. Thank you, Councillor Hazelton. I have Councillor Cooper, followed by Councillor Wienko, followed by Councillor Bocek. Thank you, Mayor and Victoria. Thanks for all the work on this. It's, uh, you, you did a stellar job and uh, it doesn't mean we aren't going to ask lots of questions, mind you, <laughs> but um, and make some suggestions, etc. cetera. Um, you know, and I agree with a lot of the questions that were just asked about, uh, you know, some some information that may be not quite here. For example, uh, the district paying for things. I, I'm unless you know something I don't. It basically, um, when we say the district's paying for it, Township of Georgia Bay is paying for it, and our customers, our constituents, are paying for it. And if that's not correct, uh, maybe I should let you answer that right away. Uh, I absolutely understand both Councillor Hazelton and your comments about that. Um, there's no additional information that I know. What you are saying is, yeah. So, so thank you for that, Victoria. And, and it's, it's um, um, I, I guess what then comes to mind for me is uh, a little bit along the lines of the cart before the horse, only in that if we don't know what this whole package is gonna cost us um, and whatever, we don't even know what the package is, let alone what it's gonna cost us. I, I, I find it very difficult to, 
make any decisions, including I don't, it's not that I don't support what, what uh, Go Home Lake wants to do, but who's going to pay for it? And if we roll that model out, uh, I can tell you in Honey Harbor, one, one, one uh, uh, station, transfer station, isn't going to be able to handle Honey Harbor. Uh, it's huge. And so we'd probably need two or three of them. And then one, one says to oneself, well, maybe we need to fix the model that we have at the marinas uh, so that it can work for everybody. Because uh, frankly, I, uh, I think that may, may be a solution. I, the other thing I wanted to say is that, um, you know, manned transfer stations are very expensive. And, and uh, Lake of Bays has been able to do it. And the reason they're doing it is that 98% or whatever, the mayor told me 99% of of their uh, constituents that are seasonal, 80% of their constituents are seasonal, 99% of them are road access. So when they come and they go and they go into town, Huntsville or Bracebridge, they throw their garbage in their back of their vehicle and drop it off at the transfer station. They have three, three or four, and maybe it's four transfer stations and that's it, no roadside, nothing else. But their, their model is such that uh, even though they have almost not quite as many households, but close to the number of households we have, their costs are 50% of ours. We're up to 2 million. So if we add in a whole bunch of other things, where are we going to end up? I'm, uh, we're already as a percentage uh, on a household basis, uh, on a per capita basis, highest in, in the township, uh, the district of Muskoka. So that concerns me. So I really do feel that we, we need to have an understanding of what these things will cost to solve the broader issue of solid waste. The final point I'll make is that, uh, you know, after some discussions with uh, Chris Hyde of MOECP, which I know you've had as well, uh, the indication uh, from a, a bit of a Zoom call we had with him was that uh, there may be an opportunity uh, for a little bit of flexibility around the, the date, the final date, um, because of uh, what's being uh, imposed. And uh, so that was one thing. The other thing is I had a discussion recently with, uh, with Commissioner Yon and, and, dis and Director Mack about just the whole subject of bin sites, et cetera, because we're running into all sorts of challenges in terms of getting the bins tipped at the marinas. And one of the discussions that we had and um, their feedback to me and my feedback to them was that uh, if we have unmanned bin sites, uh, and we've got examples all around our township and around the district, uh, including one in Honey Harbor, that often is a mess. The, the, the um, conclusion is unman unmanned bin sites don't work. They just generally don't work. People are going to throw garbage at them and uh, not necessarily put the garbage where it belongs. And when I say unmanned, I'm not talking about marinas. I'm talking about uh, there used to be one on South Bay Road just before Highway 400, and it had to be closed because it was such a mess. That We know the Honey Harbor one is often a mess. So I, I think it's important for us to remember that uh, one of the pieces of this puzzle may be the closure of uh, unmanned bin sites. And, and, uh, and I think the district is certainly of the same mind. So I wanted to uh, make, make that point as well. So I know there were some questions in there and I'm just uh, getting, uh, getting this out to you in terms of where, where my thoughts are on this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Owienko, followed by Councillor Bocek. Okay, I'm gonna put on my, my district hat here, my EPW district hat here because we're we're, we're starting to develop some conspiracies here. First of all, uh, we are getting a term straight. A transfer site is a site where you have way scales, uh, a manned uh, individual there, I know 10 hours a day or whatever it is, and you have uh, bins on one side, you have uh, blue bins on another, you have places for uh, 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 tires to go, you have uh, an area for, for metal and wood and so on. That's a transfer site. There is absolutely no plans from the district's point of view to build another transfer site in our township. That's a given. Uh, what we're talking about is waste depot sites, similar to what's in the Honey Harbor. There's one here on South Gibson Lake Road. There's one up at 12 Mile Bay Road. 
though, that is what we're talking about for, for Go Home Lake. This is a waste depot site, not a transfer site. So give it that uh, terminology because it, it means something differently. Uh, the other issue is the, the district does have, and I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's over $600,000 put aside to, um, to resolve all these bin site issues across the, the district. So they're, they're funding all the work to establish appropriate waste management sites across the district. Now that money is going to be used for. Now, when it actually comes to physically to, uh, building uh, a waste depot site, um, you can check with uh, you can check with the district who pays for that. They may pay for that themselves, or we may end up paying for it. But basically, it's a chain link fence around some bins. Uh, blue bins, uh, cardboard, and waste bins, similar to Honey Harbor, it would be sufficiently larger than what we have now. And there is plans to have some form of, man, uh, of, of supervision, be it you know, part-time, be it uh, random or whatever. So that the plan is to have some kind of supervision. It's not going to be seven days, seven hours a day or whatever, but there's going to be some planned uh, uh, supervision on these sites. So basically what the district wants to do is for mine. So for the new ones, they're gonna put a, a new waste depot site at uh, Miners Bay. And we don't know the location of that. It could be in the, in the Miners Bay parking lot or it could be down the road. That's up to the district. And uh, what they wanna do, and I don't know if they're gonna have one in this area, which you call here Gloucester Pool, Six Mile and so on, uh, uh, Little Lake area. I don't know if they're gonna plan on putting one down there. But they, they do want to want put one in Honey Harbor because irregardless of what happens at the marinas, not all in all nine marinas in Honey, Honey Harbor are going to have uh, a bin site. So some those those marinas that don't have uh, something on site has have to go somewhere. And the bin site at Honey Harbor is not large enough to handle much more traffic. So they want to put a new one someplace, and that's what they want to review. But Keep in mind, there's no such thing as transfer sites being considered. It's only bin sites. And I'm not convinced, uh, totally convinced, who's paying for that. So maybe uh, I know the whole, all the plans to do it is all paid for. But you maybe, uh, uh, Victoria, you can check with them as to if, who pays for the building of these, uh, these waste depot sites. And I would not be surprised if the district's going to do that. So there may not be a cost to ourselves. It'd just be the operating cost. But you can check on that. Thank you, Councillor Bocek, followed by Councillor Douglas. Uh, thank you, and I don't have a lot to stay, say on this matter outside of I visited a few marinas. Uh, two in Honey Harbor that I went to, um, both have given up on the process and have ordered in their own bins. Um, they've lined them up eight, 12 long on the marina properties and they're going to be paying for the tippage themselves and that would be south bay cove and paragon marine um they have no faith in in the district and in, in doing anything or certainly not doing anything that is makes any sense financially so um you know it's it's a cost to their boaters their boaters i guess have agreed to it and you know if you figure out you got 250 boaters and you got to have nine bins dumped every week. It's easy to do the math and tell your boaters that their dockage is going up two or 300 bucks a year to cover it. So it doesn't seem to be that big of an issue to me. Um, the individual marinas seem to be thinking about it and figuring out their own ways. Now, one common comment is, well, if the township of Georgian Bay is so willing to pay the district to pick up my garbage, why don't you pay me to pick up my garbage? You know, if, if Marina number A, uh, it costs our township $5,000 to the district to pick up those bins, why don't they just give me the money, offset my cost for picking up my own bins? Because apparently this no unmanned bin thing only affects municipalities and, and, and counties, and provincially to governments. I don't think it affects the individual owners because 
every store owner in my district has a bin, whether it's the general store, the grocery store, the liquor store, all of them have bins. And they all pay for their dumping of their bins. And I think the marinas maybe are getting on board going, ah, this is just a nightmare. Uh, I'll do it my own way. So that's what I'm seeing out there. Down in my neck of the woods, up near Paul, um, Six Mile Lake area, quite quite valuable to have bins up, up there. Down here, we have one set at the old shutdown Severn Marina. Um, and uh, we have island residents on Gloucester Pool and Little Lake that use those bins, um, but more often abuse the bins by the by the permanent residents on land that miss garbage day or have some heavy refuge that's in their garage and they just hey these bins are over there i'm going to fill up my dump my pickup truck and go dump it in there and they're not being used for what they're meant to be used for which is for the island residents so um just information from my ward uh victoria that um, so you have some si sort of idea of what I'm seeing out uh, with boots on the ground. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Douglas. Councillor Douglas. Sorry, Victoria. Thank you for all the work you've put into this document. Um, this is, a, this is one of our most challenging issues that we have to deal with in the township. And I also want to acknowledge to a few of our councillors that have brought up the Gohome Lake um, bin site. Appreciate the fact that you're in support of doing something as will your fellow councillors, including myself, when it comes to your own ward. Uh, it's, they're very individual in the way they need to be handled just from perspective, as you've all mentioned already, some are coming from Isle and some coming, it's, it's quite different for each bin site. So um, the one thing I would like to ask Victoria, because I'm not aware, like, I'm just not quite sure when I, um, Councillor Bochuk just brought this up. Do we have the ability to, it's just a comment for everybody actually, um, to not have the district involved and, and take the money from the municipality and put it straight into paying directly rather than having the d district involved. Do we have that ability? Does anybody know that answer? Uh, from my understanding, um, Councillor Douglas, I believe that's something that we're going to have to get a lawyer to answer you. I, I, I think that's that's going to be really difficult for anyone at the table today to, to be able to give any type of answer without, you know, potentially Causing um, a problem. <laughs> yeah. My, my understanding is when the district of Muskoka was created, uh, responsibilities were allocated between the upper and lower municip uh, level municipalities, and that solid waste management was allocated to the upper tier. And therefore, in order to get it changed, we would have to get the uh, the province to ch change that particular responsibility and allocate it to the lower tiers or maybe just one lower tier versus the upper tier. To me, that's part of the I'll call it legal conversation we have to have. Okay. And the reason I asked that, thank you for that answer. Uh, just for a moment. Uh, Councillors sure. Cooper and Hazelton, I appreciate you staking your hands up, but I want my turn before we do our second round. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that answer. I mean, the reason I'm asking that is because I've heard on a number of occasions about getting the marina owners involved and uh, them running the bin sites and so on. So I, I'm just trying to get a, a, an idea of whether we are even going to be able to do that. But it sounds like coming from Councillor Bochuk, one of the marinas or two of them have already done that. So I'm just wondering what the, um, you know, where we stand legally about doing that situation. I would love an answer to that. It just might answer one of the questions that's being consistently asked here about marine owners and being able to do their own thing. And just a bit of information for um, some of you that have brought this up. There, there has been conversations going on going uh, with the marina, one of the marina owners anyways, in regards to the waste management. But I think because we don't have some of these questions answered, it's really hard. I mean, we've had discussions with Chris Hyde. It is very difficult to for anybody to move forward. So we, we kind of need those kind of answers. We need those answers as to whether or not this is even allowable before we can proceed with trying to get our marina operators involved, I think, um, at this point. Um, yeah, and aside from that, I think Councillor Wayanko brought up a really good point. It's not a transfer station we're looking for here. It's a man site, which is very, very different. And again, um, our hope is that we're not trying to 
get exclusivity here. There is a, an issue and it is well recognized within the entire township. And, you know, you have my full support and I'm sure all the other council support for every single area. It need, they do need to be addressed. But in conversations, you know, had with um, Fred Yon, it's a huge nut to crack to do it all at one time because every area requires something very different. Um, we're not cookie cutter, you know, like Go Home Lake is a sort of an insular little group on its own. And then you've got Honey Harbor, which is quite spread out and has a lot of traffic coming through from Georgian Bay. So we're not trying to do something out of the box here without the rest of you, if that's, you know, the thought here, it's not. We just need to get started somewhere. We need to try and get some answers to make it, um, to make a start somewhere in this township. And then if this works in this location, maybe part of what we're doing can be applied to the other parts of the township as, as it goes along. But there is a lot of answers that we need still. And anyways, Victoria, thanks for all your work on this. Thank you. I, I, I would agree with all of you in the sense that this is a significant challenge we face and in theory, what one approach would be, well, it's actually it's a significant challenge that district faces, but I think we're, we're all expressing one way or another that uh, including district in, in their indirect way, we're in a better position to respond to many of our constituents and many of the needs because we're much more aware of it. I mean, it was blatantly obvious that the consultant that the district hired to advise them on insights and that had no conception zero conception of the concept of uh, water access only residences. That was totally foreign to them. And it's totally foreign to 98%, 99% of the province. So in fairness, but it means that they failed to understand the situation. Um, I think as Councilor Douglas stated, I do think actually a lot of the challenge we have in front of us is legal. And the reason I say that is that Anybody I've talked to, with almost no exception, has said, actually, what we have now is working better than almost any other proposal that's come forward, subject to a few improvements, i.e., marinas should keep their bins farther away from the water's edge in some cases. Um, but anything, any significant change from what we have now so far, and everything I've seen and heard, is going to involve a lot more money is going to involve the people changing their habits and is going to risk um, a lot more um, inappropriate disposal of garbage, if I can put it that way. Um, Councillor Bochuk made, made, made reference to um, South Bay Cove. I think there is a, an important distinction that we have to understand. And in my opinion, it's a flaw in the provincial law. South Bay Cove is a yacht haven. They don't serve cottagers, they serve people on yachts. And the way the province is interpreting the law, the law, by the way, says, and, and there was some piece of it in, in uh, the Victoria's report, the law says that if you accept garbage from a different location, then you are, that, then that is by definition a transfer station that has to meet all sorts of, of conditions. However, they've decided that if you own a yacht, and it doesn't matter whether you generated that garbage um, three feet off of Councillor Cooper's dock in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, as far as the law is concerned, that garbage was generated at South Bay Cove. Now, does, is this logical? Absolutely not. Because if somebody can generate garbage uh, five feet away from Councillor Cooper, and I, Councillor, I'm just picking on you because you have a relatively remote cottage, that's all. Uh, if somebody could anchor off his dock and, and create empty food containers, but Council Cooper on his dock creates empty food containers and they classify them completely different, that's illogical. It doesn't make sense. And, and I think that's what we have, part of what we have to do, in my opinion, is and quite possibly hire a consultant um, to help us with this, is make an appeal to the province saying, you're current laws discriminate against water access only property owners. Because unless you want to put a boat going dock to dock to dock to dock, which I think makes absolutely no sense because who wants to put a, a massive 
animal proof bin on the end of their dock to collect their garbage, um, the law should be changed. Um, you know, and, and it's interesting if you look at something like Paragon Marine, which Councillor Bocek made reference to, they have both yachts and um, customers from the uh, with cottages. And legally, their bins are not allowed, their private bins are not allowed to accept garbage from cottages. So the we uh, we need to have the law changed so that uh, marinas can accept garbage from that was generated on other properties, just like yacht havens can accept garbage that was generated on yachts nowhere near their dock. And, and I think that's part of the approach I believe we should be taking. Um, as, as referenced earlier, the idea of the township being responsible for its own solid waste management versus the district, that will again take the province. And we, I think we have to approach the province on that and saying, you know, it might be more practical to, in effect, cut out the middleman. Um, and uh, whether or not that's feasible depends on whom you ask. Some people say, well, maybe some people say not a hope in heck. Um, but I think we have to look at some of that. I think having said that, the suggestion of Ms. Lemieux that we say district, okay, you talk about creating more waste depot sites, find them, might in part uh, convince them that th that is a much bigger challenge to, to, to solve than they may think it is. It, it's, it's very different when you have a roadside bin site somewhere in, in the rest of the district that um, they uh, look at and they say, okay, this, this is being abused because nobody's in the area, et cetera, et cetera. And then they talk about transferring it to a waste depot site by maybe combining two or three roadsides and call it one site. That's a different situation than what we have. And, and Honey Harbor is the, the strongest example of that because we have such a concentration of marinas and residents that go through Honey Harbor. And the, the, the volume would be overwhelming if it's all going to one or even two waste depot sites on the Honey Harbor Road. It would be overwhelming. And I'm not even talking yet about the inconvenience uh, to the residents, which is a very important topic. It's just do they have any idea of the volume? Um, and, you know, I, I want to tell you a little story. You might argue it's unrelated, but I think it's kind of interesting in, in, in talking about the problems with the law. A few years ago, um, the road where I live in Barrie was under construction. So what did the construction company do? They took our bins, our recycled bins, our garbage bins. They put a great big number on each one of them with the house number. And on garbage day, we put all our garbage at the end of our, uh, our, our road. They took it all and took it to the end of the construction site. So the garbage truck could come along, you know, half a block away from me and pick up 20 homes garbage. Technically, that was illegal. Because the garbage was transferred from one property to another before it was collected. But that's, that's how absurd our laws are. And I think that that, in, in my mind, one of the, the attacks we should take is going to the province and saying, your laws make no sense. They discriminate against water access only cottagers. They don't allow for efficient and convenient collection of garbage. And if your main purpose is to try to keep the garbage out of the woods, keep it out of the lakes, um, let's make it so that people want to use the system. And, and I think that that is an approach that we should take. But I say at the same time, I say, if district thinks they know better, well then district, show us how you're gonna make it work. Show, tell us where you're gonna put these waste depots. Go home lake, they have a road to put it on and there's a certain convenience to go home lake or not convenience is the wrong word, but there's the great majority of people in go home lake go up and down the same road and they are used to taking their garbage to the end of that road. So for them, a change in habit may not be that significant. I don't, know, I, I don't want to speak completely for them, but it, it's a less dramatic step than taking somebody now who might go to a marina that isn't even served by the Honey Harbor Road and told, well, you have to go to a waste depot site, either the transfer station or waste depot site in Honey 
uh, Honey Harbor Road, and you say, yeah, but my marina is on a different road. Does this make sense? So I, I, I think that the, the, the you know, the, the only other alternative, and again, this is all part of going back to district. Do we want to set up a system similar to the archipelago, which has transfer stations, and they are transfer stations, that are water access? Okay, district, you want to put transfer, water access transfer stations in Honey Harbor or somewhere, or in Cognachine for that matter? Show us where. Do you have any idea how much that land will cost? Let alone setting up, you know, you, you got to spend a million dollars putting in the bins and everything, but you got to get the land first. Um, and I don't think uh, many of the, many of our uh, uh, residents that are north of Honey Harbor are keen on uh, selling half their lot to uh, so a bunch of garbage bins can be put in. Um, so you know, I, I I think that the district by telling them, okay, you find the waste depot sites, you're basically telling them good luck because it will be a, a challenge. So. I, I guess that's my take on it. I, I believe that we should hire a consultant to uh, find the, collect the information that's needed and find a way to, um, you know, heck, the consultant could even be a lobbyist for that matter, saying, how do we tell the province? And I think we should get Norm Miller on board. How do we tell the province? We need minor adjustments to the law to allow bin sites at marinas to continue. If they say fence them and we're fine, or keep them 30 meters away from the water, I, fine. But by the way, it's the most practical way to get the majority of the garbage generated on our, in our township to a landfill site is through the marinas that over half our residents use going to and from their home. I think that's enough of my rant for now. Um, I saw I, I saw earlier Council Councillor Hazelton and Cooper's hands up. I see now uh, Councillor Bocek and Councillor Douglas. But Vic, Victoria, I'm going to give you a chance to say a few things if you like, and then we'll do the round two. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. So, you know, all the comments that have been received so far, of course, as you've all mentioned, there are ones that have come up again and again and again, and I think everyone here knows that ever since this has started, we have all felt like we're kind of going, we're chasing our own tail in a big a big circle. Um, kind of like what uh, the mayor was actually just getting to is, you know, every every single piece here, I, th I think there's really these three large pieces that I, I do have to also comment, which I know that many of you, if not all of you have come to understand as well that from a planning perspective, um, you know, what I wrote in this report is from a planning perspective and what is possible to potentially be done, i.e. actionable on, on that front. But I think moving forward, you know, Councillor Hazelton's right. There are some very significant outstanding um, items that haven't been addressed from a financial perspective and cost perspective. That's absolutely something that, again, all of you can agree and I sure as heck can but that's well beyond my scope. And I, you know, trying to get documents or having someone comb through those things that that's well beyond what the planning department at the township can do. Um, so we have the financial piece that needs to be answered. Absolutely. I think we need to get someone, if we're not able to, if council's not able to get the answers they need directly from the district, if you feel like you have not got those answers yet to make decisions, then I, you know, bringing someone in who can help you get those answers, uh, I think would be very beneficial. Um, as the mayor was just speaking, I think a big piece of this has become a potential lobbying issue, especially when it comes to the interpretation of um, the Environmental Protection Act and how it may need to be adjusted to, to reflect the situation in our township. Again, I think that is well beyond the scope of what I am able to do for you. Uh, but again, I think it still needs to be done on behalf of council. Um, and again, that legal piece, the, the questions that Councillor Douglas brought up about the cost. And, you know, when we when we do talk about, and understandably, a lot of these private um, business owners do want that answer of how much is this gonna cost? What is this gonna look like? Um, but I think too, being cautious of, 
again, just this is me going combing through all these documents the last couple of weeks for a second time and knowing that it could be potentially rocky waters for the municipality to potentially even get to the point of quoting to any type of private business, hey, you know, it might cost X because if it costs Y, I just, you know, again, as a member of staff, I don't want to see that happen because what that could potentially lead to, again, that, that, that is more of a legal discussion, but that's where I'm coming from. And my intent from the recommendation in front of you today really is, you know, at the end of the day, we may really end up having to rely on some private business owners to help solve the problem. However, I don't think that can be something that we can expect and at least triggering some type of work like this by the district with the township assisting where we can, at least it's something and at least it's something that is government led and you know, that's where I was coming from. So I did just want to bring up those points. This is where, uh, you know, I'm able to stand in front of you to provide you that information. Uh, you know, in this document, I have provided the outline of what exactly a private business owner needs to apply for from a planning perspective and the studies that they would likely have to do. Um, again, on a site specific basis, we will have to look at each individual site that wants to apply. No problem. We will tell them exactly what studies they need to do. Um, but when it comes to the cost of constructing something that can meet the standards for them to obtain an ECA. I, I don't know if you'll ever get those answers to be totally honest. So um, that's just, again, circling back to some of the comments that were, were said, um, that's where I came to this recommendation in front of you. So I, I, I respect all the comments that were made. I respect the fact that you feel like you haven't gotten a lot of information back. Um, but I do think at, at this point, it's time that someone else is brought in to assist to, in a legal lobbying level, because I think that's beyond the scope of the expertise of, frankly, anyone in our township right now. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Ms. Lemieux, thank you. And um, you know, with all our conversation, nothing was against you. And we, we respect that with the suggestions you brought forward, you have limitations of what you can do and are allowed to do. So. You, you know you know that. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to start round two? I see Councillor Douglas's hand. Followed by Hazel. I see everybody's hand. So I'm going to say Councillor Douglas, Hazel, Hazelton, Cooper, Wienko. If I, I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. Well, I and do then, think there was a gentleman before me, but if no one minds, I'll just speak. Speak. You're all fine. Okay. Um, yeah, again, Victoria, I, I think all of our comments have, you know, nothing to do with your report as far as, you know, slamming it in any ways. It's a very challenging situation. Uh, I do have a question, though, that I'll put out there. And I, you know, I've heard a couple of times here about we have to get the laws changed with the province. Who, who does that? <laughs> that's the question. I mean, that seems to be the underlying problem as far as Costco and trying to get marinas involved, because I, I agree that there is going to be some marinas that may want to do this privately, but who actually does that? So you, you just trying to get to the meat and meat of this whole thing is if that is something that needs to be done, then who, who is the person that steps forward to do that? What entity is it? We hire a consultant and get them to lobby for us, or is this something the township does, or we need to go to district and say, Hey guys, who I don't think will do it. But um, so that, that would be the first question that I would like to have an answer to at some point. Okay. Um, the other thing that uh, I just, you know, would, would like to sort of, Mayor Kutsia, you brought something up about, you know, what we have right now, it's not perfect, but it's better than what they were trying to propose when they had no idea what water access people have to deal with. And so if, if we have to do something like these, um, first of all, Go Home Lake, for those of you who don't know, used to have a uh, compound on the road many years ago, right close to the 400 before they did the, the new cutoffs. Um, and that actually worked reasonably well. We still had abuse done there. People still tended to get lazy and just pull their trucks up and dump it all on the ground instead of walking it into the fenced in area. But if we could get a version of that started, and I think that's more of what we were intending to do was to try and get the, you know, people seem to want that back again, is to have that fenced in area and figure out what we can do about having a man part time. And how that looks, I don't know. But I mean, we have to start somewhere. And I think that for 
I can only speak in terms of my area because I know this and I know what we're used to. They are used to bringing their garbage by, by boat and taking it to the bins, whether that means they put it on the back of their tailgate of the thing and drive it a short ways or whether they walk it across the road or, or whatever. Um, so there's not going to be a big change for them if we do something like this. Now, how it looks about the manning part of it, what the manning means exactly, whether that means we somehow hire somebody part-time or a student or whatever to clean up the mess or to just sort of man the really busy times, which would be the Sundays or whatever during the summer. I, I don't know, but I, I think doing something rather than nothing and trying to do this all in one big nut is just, I think it's just too overwhelming. And I think I've heard that from Fred Jan a couple of times that it's, and um, Jessica, I think it's Jessica or Rebecca, I can't remember, but um, so I'm hoping that, you know, that everybody agrees that we should just go ahead with at least trying to get something done on the Go Home Lake site because that is one that I think is very insular. It's you, you, the areas that you guys are from in Honey Harbor and that, that's a huge, you, you guys have got such a big area there to deal with between all the, re, the full-time residents and the water access people coming in that that's gotta be a number of different pieces and not just one. So I'm in favor of trying to get the survey out to go home like so we can just get a, a start on at least this one site. And it's not because I live here guys and it's not because I'm, you know, the ward council for here, but we got to start somewhere. We've got to start somewhere to get some of this starting to deal with some of this. And I really would like to know how we start approaching the province and getting things changed because without that, I don't know how we're going to get the marinas involved by the sounds of it. Thank you. Ms. Lemieux. Uh, so to Councillor Douglas, I, I agree. I think at this point, you know, something that I am, I am happy to do on committee's behalf, or if it has to, maybe the clerk can confirm if it would have to go to council first before giving me direction. That's beyond <laughs> beyond my understanding, but essentially getting, you know, talking to our lawyer and saying, what exactly does that process look like in the sense of the lobbying and, and what would they need? Um, and, and having that circulated to to committee for the next for the next meeting or something like that. I think I think that's fair. But again, I think that's something that we're going to have to have a lawyer um, give us a clear understanding before we you know, go, go off and, you know, try and hire consultants or something like that. I think, I think that's fair to, you know, we, we have great lawyers in place to help us. So um, if it is committee's wish for me to do so, that that's no problem. Ms. Way, did you unmute yourself intentionally? Yes. I was just going to say that the current direction or draft resolution doesn't speak to us obtaining legal counsel directly or getting a legal opinion in any um, manner. So I think it would be pertinent given the direction of the dis this discussion that staff have that in writing, um, given the high stakes and the investment in the community mm -hmm. on this item, um, but would potentially still need to be ratified by council. So before we are able to move forward. So if there's anything else that you maybe want done in conjunction with should maybe be all inclusive. So I don't know if that means expanding the resolution or adding at least that legal piece to it. Um, that makes. I, yeah, I would I would suggest that we're going to do one more round of conversation here and then probably expand upon the resolution with maybe one or two more paragraphs. I think it might be the best route for everyone. Okay. Um, Councillor Hazelton, I think I recognized you after Councillor Douglas. Thank you. Um, there is some additional knowledge that we have uh, that uh, isn't reflected in Victoria's report. Uh, as a result of meeting uh, a meeting that uh, Councillors Jarvis Cooper and I had with uh, MECP, um, we documented it, and uh, MECP Chris Hyde sent it to uh, Jessica, so she has a copy of it. Um, she may not have uh, shared that with Victoria, um, but um, there are several kind of points floating around in the air here. Um, I was very intrigued to hear from Councillor Bocek that South Bay and Paragon have gone and got their own garbage facilities. Um, or, or bin sites, uh, according to MECP, Chris Hyde, if there is one non-liveaboard boat at the marina, then that marina is barred from having their own bin sites. And so uh, Paragon is, is going to be a fail. Uh, and I've heard that other, that there are some, a well, few uh, cottager uh, slips at uh, South Bay. I could be wrong, but it um, doesn't matter what they call it. Uh, if there is one or more, 
non-liveaboard boat at that marina, it is a fail for them doing their own bin site. Now they may be able to get away with it this year, uh, but according to the MECP, they were extremely explicit about the fact that that was a fail. Now, what's interesting to me is um, we have done some uh, research on other jurisdictions outside of the district, and it doesn't appear to be that no, any other marina in, the, in Ontario that we've been able to find is being held to this, kinds, uh, this kind of criteria. So when you look at what is going on here in our township and in the district, we are being held to a different set of standards than all these other marinas uh, elsewhere in Ontario. And so when uh, we talk about, do we need to hire a consultant uh, or a lobbyist? Uh, absolutely, we need to find some way of getting to somebody at MECP to recognize that they are driving stupid laws and policies into our township and our district that are not being driven into all the other areas of Ontario and we need to call a spade a spade. This is completely unfair. Uh, it's an absolutely absurd. But uh, that's kind of the, one of the, the key things that we need to sort out is this inappropriate treatment of the district. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, talking about getting an ECA, well, we know what it costs to get an ECA because the MECP knows exactly what that process is. In fact, the transfer site on uh, Honey Harbor Road uh, is a certified ECA uh, approved transfer site. It just isn't manned and would be needed to be manned in the future. And by the way, uh, MECP used the word transfer site uh, as their definition when you move garbage from point A to point B as uh, per Councillor, uh, sorry, uh, Mayor Kutzier's example, if you take it from the bottom of his driveway and move it half a block down the street, that's essentially a transfer site. So. Um, sadly, MECP have this definition of transfer site and uh, they would want, you know, if a marina in Honey Harbor or anywhere wanted to have their own bin site, uh, they would have to have them zoned as a waste transfer site. Uh, so similarly, Go Home Lakes would have to be a waste transfer site. It may be called other names, but from a zoning standpoint, that's what MECP is telling us it would be needed. So those are uh, some, some key things on that. We talked a little bit about, uh, and I've heard the, the issue of, well, this uh, waste management is a district uh, mandate. So uh, I am, I'm not a huge believer that we're gonna make any progress with MECP. And I, am, I have very little confidence we're gonna make any progress with district on changing and le legislation that governs waste management. However, to uh, Councillor Bocek's point when he said uh, that his marinas are telling him, why don't you just pay me? Why doesn't the township just pay me and I'll look after the garbage? Well, guess what? That's essentially what uh, a few of us have been trying to suggest. And you have a resolution from back in, I think, May of 2020 that says, district, tell us what it costs only to run the two manned transfer sites on South Bay Road and 12 Mile Bay. If you did that, you're not changing any legislation. You're allowing two transfer sites to be continued to be operated. And so the district, uh, as we already know, charges the township for the waste management services that they deliver. So if we scale it back and they only deliver two manned transfer sites, South Bay Road and 12 Mile Bay Road, uh, then we're not changing legislation. The district is still looking after the township's waste management responsibilities. And then all of the other waste management strategies that we might want to entertain could be private solutions. Uh, in fact, the Go Home Lake site could be a private solution, subcontractors, et cetera. Um, but the, uh, if we try to, if we think we're going to change provincial legislation that governs waste management between the district and the township, I think we'll be here uh, in 10 terms from now, still arguing about the same concept. I actually don't have a lot of hope for changing MECP's, MECP's policy either, um, but uh, you know those are things that we, we can entertain. But um, I loved the idea of uh, hiring a township-initiated consultant and lobbyist to uh, take kind of what Victoria has already pulled together take some additional material, which uh, Councillors Jarvis Cooper and I have pulled together in conjunction with 
M e Chris Hyde at MECP and um, our CAO has a copy of that. Uh, we we ha have also um, put together kind of a draft business plan uh, with one of the um, uh, marinas uh, making a bunch of assumptions. So what I really want to share with you is that the concept of a private waste uh, transfer site in a marina is not um, something that needs a lot of flushing out. It needs three things. It needs us to be able to say uh, to our community, the district is only going to charge us for two man transfer sites. Uh, the, uh, the township planning department are going to help us expedite the process of rezoning small sections of marina property to enable that to be a bin transfer site. Uh, and the uh, finance department is needs to be able to help us understand that we can allocate uh, waste uh, management services at a property, a, a uh, used property, not a vacant property, but a used property or uh, you know, habited property, if you will, uh, basis, then we will have the building blocks from which to determine if private uh, waste transfer sites can be made uh, to be a reasonable business plan uh, going forward. So there's lots of things that we need to do. I, I am a little disappointed that we collectively haven't been able to move forward on those previous resolutions that are six months out of date now. Um, but, you know, we need to keep talking about this and making progress. And I'm not sure how we can make progress if we don't get answers to the questions that we've been asking months ago. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councilor Hazel. Just one correction. The transfer station in the north end of our township is on Tower Road, just west of McTeer. Thank you. I stand corrected. I thought you'd like to know that little bit of information. Or perhaps I sit corrected. <laughs> there you go. Um, Councillor Cooper, followed by Councillor Wienko. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor. And um, first of all, I wanted to comment ab about your comment, having boats anchored off my dock. And I have a very big bazooka, so I don't worry about that too much. It's, no, it's only a potato gun. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> but you, 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 well, but you know what I was getting to, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I, I, I certainly did. Uh, they're not welcome. Anyway. Um, next, next time I'll pick on Councillor Jarvis. <laughs> send them all down there. Okay, so a couple of quick things I just wanted to um, comment about. And it's sort of the last uh, comments from Alan Hazelton, Councillor Hazelton, were about uh, services from the district. And I do believe that there's really we need to establish that yes the district took over those responsibilities and but also the townships the municipalities selected the services they want or don't want i think is a is another way of describing it so as we can see uh, in our budget uh, it costs about eight or nine hundred thousand Maybe it's even less than that. It might be uh, six or seven hundred thousand for Lake of Bays with their four uh, manned transfer stations, and that's all they have. We're up at two million now, and so they, we could effectively say we want just those transfer stations. Now, my suggestion is that if we were selecting uh, cer certain services from the district, we could uh, continue on with our two transfer stations and also our curbside. Uh, it seems uh, if you look at the cost of curbside, it seems like it's um, uh, very affordable for whatever reason. I, I have my own theories about that, but um, that might be a way for us to do sort of uh, have selected uh, services from the district and also outsource um, the marina action as it were. So. That's what we need is clarity on that question, but I believe the municipalities are allowed to select whatever services that they choose to, you know, that you can change it every year. I don't mean that, but uh, I, I do believe that, that we have that uh, opportunity. A couple of other things, uh, just in terms of what's going on elsewhere. Um, Director Mack indicated to me, she came from Simcoe County. Simcoe County doesn't even, isn't even involved in this. And, and there are marinas over in Midland and Penetang, some of which have 
uh, up to 50% of their uh, slips filled with uh, seasonal residents. And um, they don't have any problem. They just have a private service. They dump the bins and away, away we go. So, and those are huge marinas, some of them up to a thousand slips, but many of them in the, the size of uh, Nautilus, you know, three, 400 slips uh, and several of them, as we all know, in Midland and So um, So why this wonderful special treatment for the township of Georgian Bay, one certainly wonders. Um, I, I also, you know, I heard some comment about individual businesses being able or, to order in a service. They can do that. As I understand it, one of the regulations though is that uh, if you're a restaurant, you can have a bin, but you don't have residents that are bringing in garbage like we have at our marina. So I think there's a distinction as to businesses uh, having a private service. Uh, so we need to, I think, figure out how to, to get to that private service level if possible, because I think we can, there, there may be some ways to run this more efficiently. Some of it will be a, a district service, some will not be. Do we need to hire a consultant? I think so. Are we going to be able to lobby and get somewhere? I don't know. But at least if we can get some, um, some clear, or clear answers, and I know Victoria in the meantime is going to be doing a lot of digging for us and very much appreciated, but a consultant might also be able to do some benchmarking elsewhere and maybe we get the right consultant that might have uh, the year of the minister that that could be helpful too. So those are a few of my thoughts and uh, there we go. Thanks. Thank you. Um, well, one, one, one comment I just want to make before I switch to Councillor Rianko is I, I think one of the things that we realize and you use the example Councillor Cooper of um, some marinas and other jurisdictions who are collecting garbage from both yachts and possibly residents. I think in reality, they may be flying under the radar. Uh, just in a sense, as our marina bin sites did for 20 odd years. Um, and, you know, and, and so I'm not sure that they are necessarily approved, but rather they're, they're just getting away with it. And, and I can't help but respond, well, if they're getting away with it, that means it must be okay from a practical point of view. Councilor uh, Wayne. Chris Hyde, excuse, excuse me if I could just jump yeah. in here quickly. Chris Hyde indicated to us that they just were not <laughs> under attack. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it, 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 you know, there's no, um, there's nothing to say they were or weren't approved. Simcoe County, by the way, does not provide that service to their municipalities. That's what Stephanie told me. They, they just simply aren't in that business. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Councilor Wienko. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm quite concerned that uh, Council Cooper keeps talking about that they want to maintain their, their bin sites at the marinas, but get rid of our uh, bin sites on the inland community. And I'm, I'm really them versus us again. I want to get rid of that. We've already, uh, Council's already uh, approved uh, uh, the continuation of our bin sites uh, inland in, on the inland community. So I assume we're not revisiting that resolution. And I know the district's already working on the resolution that went up there. In fact, we've, we've talked about it at the EPW that we're, they're working on trying to improve the performance of the South Gibson, Gibson Lake Road. They're looking at Miners Bay and they're also looking at the 12 mile bay bin site. So I don't think we want to revisit that. And I, and I hope we, we don't continue doing that. Excuse um, me, again, Councilor Rianco. It's, it's, Councilor Rianco. Uh, just for clarification, yeah. are you referring to bin sites or waste depot sites? Waste depot sites. Okay, yeah. thank you. I just want, that's what I thought. 12 mile, yeah, 12 mile uh, uh, Miners Bay and, and uh, South Gibson Lake Road. The district's already working to improve those sites and well, let's find a site at, at Miners Bay and, and so on. So that's already ongoing. Um, the other issue I'm quite concerned about is that we've been spinning our wheels here for at least a couple of meetings now, and the district hasn't been part of our conversation. Uh, we've said a lot of negative things about the district today, and they're not here to defend themselves. And I think if, if uh, Stephanie was here or, or Fred Yohan was here or some staff members, they could probably clarify a lot of issues that we're, we're having here today about their roles and responsibilities. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't 
quite sure why that we refuse to have them as part of our discussion. I think they would be helpful in clarifying some of these issues. So I'm hoping in future that we can have at least one of their members um, at, at, their, uh, at, at, at our next meeting. And again, they have all this money to do all these studies with their consultants. And I don't know why we're not using their consultants. I, I don't think the consultants are have anything against the, our, our township. And the more they're willing to, to do stuff in our township, they just got to be told what to do. And if one of the things they got to do is, okay, what is the cost of building a waste depot site? I'm sure they will go away and do that. But uh, I, I think we need to use their consultants more and make them part of our group or at least make the district part of our group and, and through to the consultants. So I don't think we should hire our own consultants until we're totally uh, convinced that the district consultant is not working for us. As it comes to a lobbying, yeah, we can lobby the federal government, I mean the provincial government as much as we want, but I tend to agree with Hazleton Hazelton uh, that I don't think we'll get, get too successful with that. So, uh, you know, I'm just getting a little frustrated that we're going around and around and around and we're, we're spending a lot of time complaining about the district and they're not at our table. Thank you, CEO Gunby. Thank you very much. They were not available to attend today. Uh, so we definitely did reach out to them. They saw the report. Uh, we did not hear any questions from them about it. We told them that when they're available, they can watch this recording. So they're up to date on what members of the committee have spoken about. Um, I just wanted to verify what Councillor Cooper and, and Cooper and Hazleton have said about how Simcoe County does not take on the business of operating waste sites at marinas. I think I asked about 10 marinas within a 50, 60 kilometer radius how their upper tier manages their garbage and they probably thought that I was enjoying a little wobbly pop at 10 o'clock in the morning because they had no idea what I was talking about. So I had to explain how it works in Muskoka and they still had no, they had no clue. So I wouldn't say that uh, Georgia Bay is being attacked. I would just say that we're the only ones in this situation. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lemieux. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on a, a quick comment to Councillor Rianco's point that he just mentioned. Um, I do agree with Councillor Rianco that we all can agree here that the original work that was done, um, you know, lacking understanding of water access properties in, in some of the original reports, we can all agree on that because we're the ones that hear every single day what's actually happening. Um, a big piece of that site selection exercise that I did propose through this recommendation was to be able to trigger some sort of township specific work to be done by their consultant to try and see if they can, if they can start really digging into the problems and working. So that's, that was intended, uh, Councillor Wanko, for, for their consultant um, to, to, to head up that work, um, because I do believe they just, they haven't had that time yet. And in speaking myself with district staff, they did agree that, you know, they, they're, they're willing to do it. They're willing to work on a, on a district specific project. They just haven't really felt like they've gotten that proper direction yet. So that's why I did try and, and put this in here today. So uh, just wanted to um, provide that to Councillor Mianko. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bocek. And I'm just going to say followed by Councillor Jarvis because he's the only one who hasn't spoken on this round. Yeah, I'm going to yield my time. I, I, I got my answers. For, uh, Victoria just explained everything to me pretty well. So I'm going to stay in my lane, which is on the off ramp. So I'll be gone. I'll just add that, uh, I mean, if we have to uh, change how we do our business with regards to garbage, um, I continually dig up old sites on our island our garbage was dumped up through and into the 60s. And I really don't want to have to uh, start depositing more garbage on top of that. Um, this is getting to be really, really frustrating. I'm, I'm agreeing with uh, Councillor Wianco. We're going around in circles. Um, I, we really need to come up with some specific direction that we can give Victoria or whoever so that we can move further ahead on this. Chris Hyde was very, very helpful, I will add, in conversations. And also add that it seems to me that we are being singled out and i don't like that at all we being the district not just uh, the municipality of uh, our township and i really would like to see us 
if we can today, at least give some direction here as to where we want to go next, because this is crazy. We'll be at the next meeting going around in circles again, and it's going to be a little frustrating. All right, thank you. And I think I think your frustration is shared by all of us in that we have some good ideas. Too often we run into certain roadblocks and we don't know whether how we can get the roadblocks cleared. Um, at this point, uh, the, Ms. Lemieux put in front of us a two paragraph resolution, which I'm sure you've all read. Um, the first paragraph saying, work on the um, Go Home Lake um, Waste Depot idea. And the second paragraph saying um, uh, to the district, well, both are towards district, district work on um, what you think would, where you think you would put additional waste depot sites in the Honey Harbor and Southern Township of Georgian Bay area, um, which I think is, you know, I think that's a fair challenge to them and their consultants, because if they believe that that is one of the answers or the preferred answers, then they should be giving us a little more detail for us to consider. And I'm wondering about adding a third paragraph to this. And the third paragraph can, can be uh, that we recommend the uh, utilization of a consultant to advise on how we can best um, uh, deal with the provincial legislation as it is currently being applied to our township. And I'm, I'm, I'm leaving that open-ended because I think that would, in a sense that that would, could imply us utilizing the district consultants and or independent consultants and, and, and depending upon how discussions go. Um, because I think that if, well, I, I think it makes perfect sense for us to um, try to guide, direct, question the district consultants to see if they can be of assistance because um, we're already paying for them in effect. Um, but also be prepared that if they don't want to go down one or two roads that we think should be explored, that uh, we that we could uh, potentially hire somebody else to explore a couple of uh, those other roads if uh, we, we don't think the district um, is coming to the table. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm a little bit critical of district at times, but other times I, I fully appreciate that district doesn't really know what to do either. And they're looking to us for ideas and suggestions. Um, and so I think we can work with district, but I don't want that to necessarily preclude us from working with anybody else um, to, to enhance the information we might be able to get from district. Ms. Lemieux. Uh, thank you. I would just um, also kindly request if, if there were to be some sort of addition there um, to actually also include um, you know, consultant and legal counsel if required, because that would allow myself to reach out um, to someone in legal if, if necessary, um, without having to potentially come back for direction. Uh, that's the only point I'd like to add there, if possible. Yeah, if all else fails, just sue. Well, let's not necessarily go down that road yet. Um, Ms. Way. Oh, you can share your screen. Look at that. You're you're ready for me, aren't you? Sometimes. I like that. Have you done clerking before? <laughs> that reads pretty close to what I was intending. Council, what do you think? So I have moved by Councillor Hazelton, seconded by Councillor Douglas, be it resolved that the Committee of the Whole receives Development Services Report 2021-37 and recommends that Council recommend to the District EPW Committee that District staff and its consultants commence a public survey during the summer of 2021 regarding the proposed new waste uh, management location for the Go Home Lake community as part of a zoning bylaw amendment submission to the township with all expenses to be paid by the district. And 
the council recommend to the district EPW committee that district staff and its consultants commence a site selection exercise for the Honey Harbor and Southern Inland communities, Six Mile Lake, Luster Pool, and Little Lake in 2021 with all expenses paid by the district and that council direct staff utilize a consultant, uh, I, I'm gonna change it, utilize uh, uh, a consultant and or legal counsel. Um, I don't know if we should make that plural, it doesn't matter. Utilize a consultant and or legal counsel to advise on how to address the provincial legislation regarding waste management and environmental regulations and its impacts on the township. Council Rianco. Does this last paragraph mainly apply to marinas? Only apply to marinas? Because I don't think it really applies to the to the waste depot sites elsewhere in the township, does it? So I think maybe you should say just the marinas in that last paragraph. Um, Sorry, you were saying. I suppose that's a good question. I think it's it's with the marina sites that we're having the the, the biggest um, challenge. I think coming up with a solution. Ms. The district doesn't have any problems with the with the the bin site concept or the the waste depot site concept. Yeah. It's just the marinas. I think. So. Yeah. Um, I, I was just thinking maybe we could just uh, focus it in on. Um, with you know water access property concerns, um, kind of just focusing in on handling the water access only property issues versus saying just maybe specifically marinas because that might be a little too too narrow. Um, just to say, yeah, I agree. Uh, so, um, hopefully, you can just leave that as broad as possible to give you latitude, Victoria. That was. I mean, yeah. I think that's always better to try and leave the wording as broad as possible. And that gives you the opportunity to deal with whatever comes up without having to come back to us again. Well, you can put, you can put marinas in brackets. So to give them an idea of what we're mainly in, interested in. Yeah, I would argue that Victoria is already aware of what we need. Yeah. You know, the, we're, we're the, where we're aiming on all this. And uh, I think as per uh, Councillor Douglas's comments, I think we would give Victoria the latitude. Um, I'm sure she'll be using it responsibly. Don't doubt. Councilor Cooper. I'm, I'm certain she will, and I'm uh, very encouraging about giving her latitude. So, uh, but I just uh, think that we need to be careful about the wording uh, paid for by the district. We use it three times uh, and um, I think maybe we need more definitive wording. In other words, uh, paid for and not reallocated. I don't know. I don't want us getting a whole bunch of bills when we think the district is going to do this work for us. I'm, we're told here by P Councilor Wianco that there's 600,000 sitting around to study some of these things. Uh, so um, I just I don't want to see charges coming back to us. Hmm. You know, what, what, Councillor Wienko, is there a particular name for that fund where the 600,000 is in? No, but if you go back to some of the original uh, correspondence from the EPW, I think that's what we approved, yeah. a little over 600,000. I think uh, Victoria can probably find out what it was, but that was for the whole of Muskoka, and I don't mm -hmm. know how much of that has been spent, but uh, it definitely involved uh, our township. So, and, I, I, and again, if this is going to the EPW, um, I'm pretty sure I'll support the idea that they pay for it because it's the overall, they're responsible for waste management. And so why are we paying for, for it to, independently? So I, I think wonder, it would. I just wonder if we could add all expenses paid by the district solid waste consulting fund or something to that effect. Sure. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. Plus, we have Councillor Wianco there to st stick handle this for us. So there. And he, he certainly has a full appreciation of the challenges. And we know where he lives, so we can put our garbage there. Ooh, 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 ooh. But that, that's a much farther drive. I'm just going to the lake. 
<laughs> you know this is recorded, don't you? <laughs> he lives on Dump Bay Road. All, pollu all pollution ends up in Georgian Bay. <laughs> oh, um, Ms. Ms. Way, can you can you by chance post the modified resolution? Uh, because I, I think this particular conversation we better shut down. Okay, I'm going to say now, given the the modifications to the paid by district uh, uh, um, paragraphs, um, can I call the vote? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you very much. And Ms. Lemieux and all those who assisted you, thanks, thank you again very much for this and discussion. And I think we're all in agreement. We want this to start moving. And I'm sure you'll be in touch with various people and bring us in when you need to. Yes, thank you everybody for understanding the constraints I presented you today and being willing to work with me around that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Council Councillor Hazelton, you had something to add. Um, just before we get off uh, waste, um, uh, just a couple of data points here. Um, Nautilus Marina were to have uh, uh, four cardboard, four plastic, and nine garbage waste lifts in the month of May. Here we are uh, almost halfway in, no lifts, no bins. Uh, boat club, same thing. Woods Marina, same thing. Um, so how do we light a fire under the district to start doing their job? The stats that I have I just shared with you were lift stats from 2020. Uh, so if they did it last year and they did it the year before, but they still don't have their bins in function in these marinas, how do we light a fire under them to do their job? Because it, it's unbelievable how bad things are and everybody you talk to is complaining about garbage. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Unfortunately, wrong click. What I've heard is perfectly consistent with what uh, Councillor Hazelton is reporting that uh, people are up there generating garbage and it's not being collected. Councillor Douglas. Uh, do, um, okay, from our, our councillors that are sitting on district, who, who's got the say in this or who's got, who's got the push on this? I, I believe that Fred Yawn and Stephanie Mack are the first line. I, I really that, that. It's it's uh, CAO Julie Stevens. So, but of our councillors, the three of you that sit on district, who should be lighting the fire here? I know who it is up in district, but I mean it's frustrating for our constituents for sure. But I think for us as councillors that are not district councillors to continue to call on district. Fred Yawn and Stephanie Mack, I think that's probably not our position to do. And I leave it up to, you know, the three of you to start lighting the fires as much as you can. Not that you haven't, but um, it seems to me that, you know, you guys are going to have to take a run at them because that's not right. Like we've got people up at their cottages already, and this is no different a year than it was last year. So there should be bins in place. I totally disagree with, I mean, no, it's just ridiculous. comment. I, I can certainly answer that I've been trying, uh, Cynthia, and it's been very frustrating. I've actually tried to get a cost analysis for the last six years and no, just crickets. Um, I hope uh, Councillor Wianco, who sits on one of the committees, uh, the EPW, I don't know, if, is that waste management, uh, Councillor Wianco? You sit on the right committee, don't you? So he, he can put the heat on and I'll continue to try and do it from my end, but uh, it's inexcusable. I'm uh, People are running into these marinas where there's four and 500 slips and they're loading up their vehicles and driving their garbage down to the city. That's they're not good. very that's, happy about it. No, that's just, that's wrong on every level. I totally agree with that. That's wrong. Hmm. Okay. We have... One more subject to attack. Is everybody ready to roll or does anybody need a break? All right, let's roll. Next one is the clerk's report 2021-12.
Code of Conduct Review. Ms. Way, over to you. Thank you. Um, so the last time we met, I was directed to obtain legal opinions regarding the use of mediation in the Code of Conduct policy um, and kind of having a three-tiered approach to our complaint protocol. We do have the informal complaint process as well as the formal complaint process, which goes to the Integrity Commissioner. Um, Ms. Gumby can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe to date no one has utilized the informal process. As you noted in my report, we obtained three legal opinions, all of which have advised against having a mandatory mediation process. Um, multitude of reasons, the biggest one being costs, because I find um, generally if a situation escalates to the point of a complaint coming in, then parties aren't always willing to be in a negotiating standpoint and then you're duplicating our costs going through the mediation process and then again going through the integrity commissioner process um, and you're extending the entire event of that investigation or going through the investigation process essentially twice um, providing evidence twice having to um, provide your scenario or start of the situation twice um, and both those parties are meant to be neutral and impartial um, so really it's not necessarily beneficial in this circumstance to have the mediation process. So that is the advice we have been given. We've updated the draft code of conduct to reflect that. It can still be in there as an option if that is something someone chooses. Um, but at this point in time, we would not recommend that that's a mandatory process, which was kind of the direction that we had been headed in. Um, but the last time we met, there was still lots of ideas to be had and shared amongst the members. So I'm not sure if this code of conduct captures everything of council that they're wishing to. Um, so I would be open to hear if this is the direction you want to go in or what other thoughts or concepts need to be included within this review. All right, thank you very much. I'm sure everyone has read your report and certainly the code of conduct as it currently appears. So I'm gonna say councillors, what comments do you have at this point, please? Councillor Cooper. Uh, so thank you very much, Karen. It's been a lot of work on this, I realize, and and uh, it's a hopefully in an evolving document somewhat. And um, I I, did, I think I shared with you, but I I wanted to share with council that I just did a little bit of uh, homework on this a few weeks ago, maybe several weeks ago now. Um, and um, I did find out that two of our neighbors, um, Muskoka Lakes and the Archipelago, um, indicated a couple of things to me. I wanted to find out, first of all, how they handle their uh, code of conduct, and secondly, um, how they handle the relationship with the integrity commissioner. And um, so this may not be formal, although I think it might be wise to, to write into our um, process. What I found out with those two municipalities that uh, each of them in the last 10, 15 years, as long as they've had a, a code of conduct, have had um, two, I think Muskoka Lakes three, um, but uh, Archipelago two in that entire time. Um, and uh, that is concerning. Um, I wanted to also say that uh, one of the things that I was told uh, specifically by the clerk at the archipelago is that before the integrity commissioner is fully engaged, the integrity commissioner phones the clerk and or the CAO. And I spoke to the CAO as well of archipelago and um, they sort of, uh, they don't, how can I describe this? They, they do a little bit of homework uh, first before formally uh, registering uh, and, and taking up the gauntlet, shall we say. In other words, they speak to the CAO or they speak to the clerk, either one of who might be knowledgeable and say, you know, is this complaint true and valid? Is it, is it true and valid? And uh, they have turned away a few of these uh, complaints because they weren't really, <laughs> couldn't be, uh, couldn't be uh, held uh, as being particularly true or valid. So I think that's uh, worthy of thinking about in terms of our verbiage because 
uh, we know that our clerk and our CAO are uh, around when there may be some need for a code of conduct complaint and and or not. And uh, um, I think uh, a little bit of, what shall I say, initial vetting might be uh, something that we should consider writing into our uh, code without putting responsibility on the CAO or clerk. It's, it's not to say you're making final decisions, but you may be able to validate certain facts that, that are being claimed that are, in fact, not facts. So that's one suggestion I have, and I thought it was a good one that helped them avoid a lot of the code of conduct or, or some others. The other thing is that I found out both those townships do not post their uh, code of conduct complaints because the code of conduct is uh, brought uh, is used as a uh, tool to try and bring about better behavior, not as a tool to blame or shame uh, and uh, embarrass uh, as the case may be. The other thing by posting it that I've seen, because I've seen language used in previous code of conducts in the next code of conduct. So it's also um, being misused because some of the language is actually being um, uh, taken from one code and, and just uh, copied into another one, which is uh, in, in effect, uh, not only it's a blueprint, but it's, uh, it's um, the misuse of, of uh, something that's really meant to try and bring about uh, good relations. Uh, and it's unfortunate to see a tool that's supposed to bring around good relations to be used as a weapon. And I happen to think that our code has been in the past used as a weapon. So I'd like to see us try and avoid that as well. And one of the ways to do that is to maybe learn from what our neighbors are doing. So those are a couple of points. I'm, there's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed in a way about the uh, um, what our lawyers are advising us uh, about um, uh, what uh, you can and can't do with the code of conduct. I think we're in charge of that, but uh, um, I, I uh, happen to think that, uh, you know, when there's disputes of any sort, it's, it's nice that if you can sit down and talk and work things out before you take it to an integrity commissioner. And that's not been a practice at our township either. So those are a few of my observations and comments and uh, I hope that helps Karen. I'm just uh, trying to give you some feedback that would be useful. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. I wasn't sure I saw Councillor Douglas's hand, but I certainly now see Councillor Jarvis's hand. Councillor Jarvis. Yeah, um, uh, Cynthia, okay if I move ahead or did you have a comment? Okay. Um, what I'm in, I quite like the proposals uh, brought forth by Councillor Cooper here. Um, and I'm wondering if within the, um, the, the concept of having mediation and our, our legal opinion we've uh, received recently, uh, suggesting that instead of having the wording that we have with the uh, concept of con conflict resolution mediation, we recommend these, not make them optional, but recommend them without making them mandatory. I think it, I think people have to be aware that the options are available. They don't have to be made aware that they have to use them, but that they are available. And again, I think anybody with uh, you know, I mean, common sense would dictate that if you can sit down at a table as has been proposed here and work through your issue, that's a better way than going to the uh, integrity commissioner. I realize there are situations where it's just not possible and the integrity commissioner is where you gotta go. Uh, I, uh, Councillor Bocek has mentioned this in the past and I understand his thinking on this. So that that's, I'm not discounting that at all. I'm just suggesting if we have this as a recommendation, at least it's in front of people as an option. Thank you. Uh, CEO Gunby. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to state uh, before that conversation or that point gets communicated any further that um, staff do not recommend anything in the code of conduct. The code is not, staff is not supposed to be involved in the code and, or in any complaints. So I would really hate to see if we have three legal opinions telling us we can't mandate it, I would not 
like to recommend it either, but just state it is an option if someone chooses to go that way, because we wouldn't want to get involved in appearing like we are trying to tell someone how to handle their own complaint. Interesting Thank point. Thank you, CEO. Councilor Rianco. Yeah, no, I agree with the, the three lawyers that we should maybe take the mediation out. I wasn't a favorite anyway. But if there is going to be some kind of a pre-counsel pre consultation process, wouldn't it be uh, wise to talk to our integrity commissioner and see what she suggests as a first step before she gets involved? I know she does a preliminary uh, review of the application. Uh, to determine if she's going to proceed further or not. Maybe that's her way of handling things, but uh, if there has to be some kind of a, I don't know, review process beforehand, maybe she's the one that could, could advise us on that. But uh, I would say, I hate to get staff involved or the mayor involved or the CAO involved on some kind of a pre-consultation consulta uh, consultation and so on. Uh, I, I think we should get some, feedback from our integrity commission on, on what the first step should be, if, if not going directly to her. Thank you. Councillor Douglas. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with what the lawyers are saying about making this mandatory. However, having said that, uh, just taking on board what uh, Councillor Jarvis, you know, just mentioned, I, I agree. It's it's always better if you can try and get things um, settled out or the parties all to one table to discuss things to try and find some resolution prior to going through the legal route. And our integrity commissioner in all sense of the words, in my opinion, it's a legal route. So, um, and if we're gonna work on that vein or that is even a consideration with everyone, I also agree with what Councillor Wienko was saying is that perhaps it's our integrity commissioner that we get involved in the mediation pro process or at least get an opinion from her or him or whoever our integrity commissioner is at the time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I personally would rather see at all costs and all times that parties try to work things out amongst themselves with mediation prior to getting into legal. It's, uh, it becomes very stressful for all parties involved. It's very expensive and very often the result is damaging and, and sometimes not justifiably. So I would be very much in favor of that option being available, but again, not having the staff involved or the mayor, but having it done through um, the integrity commissioner, whether they appoint somebody or, or whatever, but that would just be my thought on that. And I don't think it should be mandatory. I think it should be an option. And, and you'd be surprised how many people might step up and, and take that option first. Councillor Hazelton. <clears throat> so um, I'll just offer a couple of things here. Uh, Clerk Way, you can update your statistics. The township has exercised an informal complaint through the integrity commissioner, um, which was filed against me about two years ago. Um, it was categorized as an informal complaint and uh, she uh, provided advice and that was the end of it. So there is an example of it, um, which is an interesting concept in that um, uh, in some respects that was kind of like a mediation process uh, however, to Councillor Douglas's comment, it's very much a, a legal world as opposed to a, uh, um, a discussion world. In other words, I was never able to find out who provided the complaint, but they specifically indicated it was a informal complaint uh, and the IC chose not to uh, take it any further other than providing me feedback. But um, the... Uh, I do agree with uh, Councillor Douglas that uh, you know, discussion is always a better path forward. Um, and sometimes there is a need to initiate a process formally uh, to, to justify the mediation step. Uh, in other words, perhaps there is a need to file a uh, formal code of conduct complaint um, and then say, okay, 
I really don't want to drive that into a cost structure, um, but let me, uh, let me engage in mediation to see if we can kind of come to a resolution. Uh, it seems like that might be a, a, a more reasonable process, which we don't have today because I don't believe that the integrity commissioner process is intended to be a mediation process. Uh, in my case, there was no ability to bring the parties together. Uh, so it was complaint, I see, comment, end of story. And maybe that was okay, but I think it would have been better personally to uh, have understood the nature of the complaint and go through a mediation process where there was a discussion. So I think the concept of mediation is useful. I, I don't like uh, the, the term mandatory because uh, I think that uh, ties people's hands where we perhaps don't need to tie people's hands. Um, but let me just kind of shift gears a little bit if I could. Um, thank you, Karen, for producing the report. I did go through it with a fine tooth, tooth comb. I have lots of um, uh, suggestions on uh, word changes or concepts concept changes um, that uh, I think need to be done if we are in fact going to adopt something like this. Um, and uh, you know, some of this, some of this applies to there's a language in here that is left over from before that needs to be adjusted if we are going to uh, have a possible, you know, a po possibility for a mediation or discussion process. Um, additionally, there is language in here that is very explicit about members of council, and yet we all know that this uh, code of conduct applies to committee members, and yet it has terminology in here um, that relates to uh, your responsibilities as an elected representative and responsible to the uh, to your constituents. And so, um, I don't think we're in a position today to approve anything. Um, I'll kind of add at the at the bottom, uh, we we've we've got lots of language in here that talks about alternate strategies, which I think is probably a good thing. Um, but if it is lobbed over the wall to the um, to the integrity commissioner, uh, then all of the language that dealt with um, the complaints process um, of, for example, what an IC can't handle. You know, uh, um, criminal matters. Uh, you know, municipal FOI uh, and protection matters. That's a clerk issue. Uh, matters already pending, lack of jurisdiction, etc. And then other topics that uh, were included in the previous document. Advice to that's already been provided to a member. Um, the need for an investigation, investigation report, the findings, report to council, duty of council, blah blah. So there's all kinds of stuff in there that was in there that isn't in the current form. And I'm not suggesting you, uh, I'm not suggesting you omitted it by accident. I think you omitted it on purpose to at least deal with what we have in front of us. But I don't think what we have in front of us is something that we could possibly vote on and, and approve to go forward because if something did go to the IC, all of that other stuff really needs to be in there. Um, but um, Back to something I was talking about earlier, and, and I'll keep referencing uh, what Councillor Douglas said, which is you know a discussion or a environment is is very useful. Um, the second you get into the IC world, into a formal world, and I will tell you what you already probably know is I had a formal complaint against me by uh, Brandy's Cove. Uh, the IC did an investigation rule report. Um, I don't know what the cost of that process was. I'm going to guess it's eight or ten thousand dollars. The report was published on the township website. So if you do a search for Hazelton, you instantly find that on the township website, uh, which in some respects isn't a bad thing because if anybody wants to know if I in fact was guilty of that, they will immediately be able to see that it's published and no, I wasn't guilty of it. So that's 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 one thing. We also had the issue with Roynan against uh, three councillors, I was one of them. Uh, and again, the report is, uh, was produced. We were all uh, found, sorry, the, the, the matter was found to essentially have no substance uh, and was um, dismissed. So yes, that was done. But my concern with this whole thing is that uh, the cost 
that has been incurred by the township for those two matters that I was involved in as, as a named uh, um, respondent have probably cost the township, I don't know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And I would hope that uh, the concept of mediation as a um, documented preferred strategy would allow these kinds of processes to be dealt with uh, in a very trivial, low cost manner. Uh, certainly in, the, uh, in, the, in the, the challenge from Brandy's Cove, the IC had already reported to me based on a question I had provided to her. And uh, ideally I wanted that to be published on the website, uh, but of course it wasn't a formal investigation and therefore I was told it couldn't be published on the website and had that, that informal uh, email response been provided, the complaint probably wouldn't even have started. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I really think that we need to wrap our minds around this concept of alternate strategies before we drive things into this formal legal-ish, legalese-ish type of uh, IC process. Thank you. Councillor Bocek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a lot to say about this. Um, it doesn't really ever involve me, thank God. But when you figure it out and there's a set of rules, you let me know, I'll pass them. Um, and it's just, we got to have a code of conduct and everybody has to conform to it. And whatever you figure out, that's fine with me. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, we've been talking about this for over half a year now, and I think it's it's dragging on longer than it should. The it's interesting that almost all our discussion has not been around what is in the code of conduct itself that we should all behave ourselves, we should all show appropriate respect. What is in the code of conduct? So what we're discussing is Schedule B, which is the protocol, and what should happen. Um, right now. It, we refer to three levels of complaint, conflict resolution, mediation, and integrity commissioner. Well, we all know that we must have a integrity commissioner. We must have a code of conduct. This is set out by provincial law. And I think we're all more or less agreeing that we should behave ourselves. So I don't think that's the issue that we're discussing here. What we are discussing is the fact that in, in a number of cases, um, we've had individual members of the of our residents who have escalated their complaints uh, to a higher level than perhaps some feel was warranted. I, I think, my, in my personal opinion, the protocol we have here is a reasonable compromise, and I say that because it does offer these three levels of options. We, you may, you may, you may. Um, and I, and I think I agree with, the, uh, well, I do agree with the lawyer saying we can't say you must go to mediation because that would be in conflict with the provincial law. I do think, and, and I'm sure the, the clerk is hearing this, I do, I do think uh, we all agree that it would be preferable if somebody has a complaint that they, they are made aware, and, and this protocol makes them aware, that it does not have to be escalated. Um, and and some people, when they make a complaint, just want to be heard. They want to make sure that you realize, whether you being counsel or an individual counsel or what have you, you realize that they feel you crossed a line. Um, but in other cases, residents just want to, dare I say it, get revenge. And the provincial law allows that. And there's nothing we can do, I believe, other than encouraging and, and, and yes, the, the clerk can do some of that informally, other than encouraging people to say, well, you know, you could go through all this whole route, but you may not have a great chance of success, or you may cost a lot of money or this or that. But if somebody, and outside of our township, we know of plenty of examples where people launch lawsuits just because they want to, you know, because they're frankly pissed and they want to somehow go public with that and they're willing to spend money to do that. And, I don't care what we write in here. I'm not at all sure we can um, prevent that from happening. 
the, 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 the province with good intentions uh, has created a integrity commissioner, just like they've been created in many other rules and regulations, but there's only so much we can do to control somebody who uh, wants to get even whether or not anybody else thinks it's justified. I would like to see us move this ahead. Um, I know that I passed on to uh, Clerk Way what I consider were a number of um, typos. Um, if, if anybody else has suggestions of where there's some inconsistency in wording, I'm sure she would appreciate that. But I'd like to see us move this ahead and get it in front of council so we can get it done and, and, and get back to uh, our regular business. Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. And uh, I'd just like to say that I think we all realize that we have to have an integrity commissioner. It's the process and how we use it. And with that in mind, um, I, I, uh, as I noted already, we have neighboring townships that have a practice that helps avoid some of these complaints. And it's, I think, what may have been misunderstood. And maybe I didn't communicate it properly. But the, either the clerk or the CAO in our neighboring uh, communities are hearing from the integrity commissioner, not the complainant, from the integrity commissioner. And the integrity commissioner is speaking to them and saying, is there any validity to this complaint or this complaint? Can you shed any light on it? Which would then help the integrity commissioner to, instead of going down a 10 and 15 thousand dollar road dismissing a vexatious complaint and we've had a number of them as as has already been pointed out so that's that's the only thing i'd like to point out yes we have to have a code of conduct it's how we um handle it and this is one way that uh, i think makes a lot of sense and also the posting i'd like to understand where the merits are where does the provincial law say it has to be posted on our website and if that's the case then our neighboring Muskoka Lakes and Archipelago uh, claim they are not posting there. So if that's the case, why are we? Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's narrow this down. So what you're suggesting is that on the complaint protocol level three integrity commissioner, you want an additional step put in there that says the integrity commissioner should review the complaint with the clerk and CAO uh, as one I'll call it additional step. Yeah, something along those lines, just saying is, is do you know anything about this? In, in other words, some uh, betting, just a yeah. very ba basic oh. betting. So that's very simply adding one extra line to the, I'll call it level three here. The second question that you've asked, and I don't know the answer to it, and I'm sure our clerk could find out, is, is the complaint required to be posted? What, or the integrity, sorry, let me rephrase that. The integrity commissioner report. Are they required to be posted? And if the answer is yes, we have no choice. The answer is no, then we as council can make can vote on whether we think they should be posted. They're required to be made publicly available. So I my assumption is whenever the first one was received, how many years ago, it was decided or determined that they would be posted on the website, and that's how we were making them publicly available. They need to be provided to council. Um, the easiest way to do that is put them on an agenda, in which case they're on our website that way as well. I know they're on our website, but they in theory would be on the website to be reviewed when the integrity commissioner comes forward, right? Um, it doesn't say they must be posted on our website. Sorry, so Mayor, so that's telling me that uh, publicly available, we have other documents like that where people can ask for something, but it's not just sitting on our website. Is that correct, Clerk Way? That's correct. So we don't have to post it. And I'm maybe suggesting that we have a step in here that says council will make a decision as to whether it's posted uh, or not. Potentially, yes. Okay. So now we've got, see, now we're getting concrete. And this is what I want is concrete so that we can get this thing done. And we've now got two extra lines that we could add to the page that is level three integrity commissioner complaint protocol. Mm -hmm. Councillor Jarvis. 
and those are those are ideas that I think uh, make a lot of sense. I have some other uh, other just grammatical stuff, so I'll send a note over to you, uh, Karen, with my just as the, as the mayor has. I have nothing else to add. Those are good ideas. Councilor Rianco. <laughs> so, how many steps have we got in there now? We still got the mediation in there because I I I can't support that. You got four steps in there now. We we have three steps. And, and each one is a may. I know, so, but I thought the lawyer said we can't put in mediation as a man. Well, he said he can't no, we can't. But the lawyer why we have it as a may? Well, because we can't, what, what the lawyer says, we can't mandate it. Correct. Yeah, well, so why do we have it in there at all? It's getting too complicated for me. I, I can't support it. It could still be that. It's, it's just too many ways out before we get to the integrity commissioner. That's why I say, you know, uh, the integrity commissioner should be, should be involved fairly early in the process to do some kind of discussion or some kind of mediation if she does a mediation or something like that. But this is getting too complicated for me and I can't support it. Well, I, I think that in, in reality, whoever's making the complaints is, has three options in front of them. And if, they, if, if the person making the complaint chooses to go straight to the integrity commissioner, they don't have to do steps one and two. They have, so they have options. And I think that's a reasonable compromise. But that's my personal opinion. And, and, and uh, I respect it if you disagree with it, but I think, I think it's important that they have choice. And, and, and if you're the one being complained against, you may not like their choice, but they have to complain and have that choice. Councillor Hazelton. So Mayor Kusser, I, I, I think you nailed it in a previous comment where you suggested that uh, some people uh, just want revenge. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I think what we need to understand here is uh, complaints are often made um, and the, what needs to be understood, I think, is what is the intended outcome of the complainant? In other words, if you start a formal process uh, and your objective is X and you can achieve X by a, uh, a conflict resolution, done, finished. But if you can't achieve your, your target objective, then maybe you need to go to mediation or maybe you need to go to the integrity commissioner and see, uh, you know, basically when you go to the integrity commissioner, it's, uh, you, you are now throwing it over the wall to a legalese process, hoping the integrity commissioner is, do, is going to do what you want them to do, as opposed to uh, in conflict resolution and mediation, and maybe you just need one level uh, there instead of two. But, um, you know, the, the objective in the non-IC step is you have some ability to influence the outcome because you're a participant. In the IC process, you've lost your participant status. Uh, you know, you get to say things, but whether or not you're listened to is, is um, out of your hands. Um, and so perhaps what, what is needed in all of this is, um, some early discussions with somebody, I don't know who that is, but some early discussions as to what is your preferred outcome from your complaint? And that ultimately uh, will, I think, help to determine whether you can go through conflict resolution or mediation or whether you go straight to the integrity commissioner. And as, as you said, you know, Mayor Kutzier, if the objective is revenge or whatever, then you're going to go straight to the integrity commissioner. But, but I think I think what, what this does is it equips our clerk to say to the complainant, "You have options." Yes. And I would, you know, I'm sure the clerk would say, "Okay, what are you trying to achieve?" Yes. I mean, I I, I recognize. I mean, I see a certain parallel between this and, and the LPAT situation. Is once it gets to LPAT, it's like once it gets to the integrity commissioner, somebody neutral remote is going to make the final decision based on whatever evidence they decide to review. Um, now, having said that, I did see Councillor Douglas's hand up 
And so I'd like to give her a chance to, to weigh in on this second round too. Thank you. Um, if I just might make a suggestion here, this is a, always a very lofty and, and uh, intricate document to discuss. It's now 312. I'd like to make a discussion that we send um, Ms. Way our, our changes that we have in mind and let her come back. And can we please put this on the um, agenda a little bit earlier? Because I think it's been a long day for all of us already. And uh, I think we've made some headway here where there's some changes and some suggestions. And maybe it just needs to come back to us at the next call meeting to just take a run at it at the very beginning with all the changes that we've talked about today. That would be my suggestion. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with all of you with what you're saying. I mean, there are people out there that just want to sue because they just, they're spiteful and there's nothing you can do about that. So having that little, that extra step in there of an, uh, um, an availability to uh, go to mediation, it's a suggestion. It's an option that's there, but not mandatory. That might help, it might not. CEO Gunby. Thank you, Chair. I would just like to remind Council that it's not been six months we've been talking about this. It's been about a year at least. And two times, two meetings ago, we have asked Council to do this exact thing. Email the clerk with all your changes. And I think she received one email and then it just, it never gone anywhere. So I would like Council's word, if you do have changes to send to her, you will do so by the middle of next week. And not bring them to the meeting. Like we need them in writing. The clerk needs them in writing because going through this anymore, we might just never bring it back. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's good today is that based on the conversation from Councillor Cooper, I think there's two extra sentences we can put in to satisfy the concerns he had. If anybody else has a few others, let's get a couple of those sentences and get it done. Councillor Rianco. Well, two things. Um, can this be sent to our Integrity Commission for her review? I would be more comfortable voting for it with, with having her reviewed it and said, okay, yeah, I, I agree with this, then you probably have my support, but right now you don't. And, and the other issue too is that, does, okay, you wanna say something, about, I got another issue. Do you wanna say something about that? Yeah, can I just, okay. sorry, respond to that. That's always been the intent, but I don't think the draft has ever gotten far enough that we're in agreement enough for me to send it to the integrity commissioner to receive comments back for us to have a final vote. So that's always been the plan, but our draft has never been wholesome enough to get to that point yet. Well, Okay, well, it sounds like a draft is, is, is in a position. So maybe you can go to the Integrity Commission, come back to us for the final vote. The other issue is, um, Karen, do you wanna be put in the position of dealing with a complaint and say, okay, which one do you want? You want A, B, or C? Do you feel comfortable negotiating how this should go forward? Uh, really? I don't think staff should be put in any type of position within this code to make any type of suggestion or decision um, being put having a process where the integrity commissioner reaches out to the clerk or CEO upon receipt of a complaint to obtain initial um, evidence or understanding you know they said this went to a council meeting did it really go to a council meeting something to that effect and we can be yes it did no it didn't here's the video etc um, I think that's very black and white of being able to provide evidence but being able to make any type of opinion, suggestion, influence is not something any clerk, CAO, or other staff member should be dealing with. So who does this then? Who, who talks to the complainant and say, okay, we have three, three processes. Which one do you want? Who does that? Theo Gunby. Thank you. Uh, so when the code of conduct is finalized, if it ever happens, we would upgrade the complaint form. And the complaint form would have, would you like option one, option two, or option three? We wouldn't want to appear that we were uh, making impressions on anyone to make a decision they're not comfortable with. But they would have the option. They would have the options. Okay. Councillor Hazelton. In the research that I did, we I found a township uh, that had two integrity commissioners. Uh, one was the integrity commissioner for light matters, and the other one was the integrity commissioner for serious matters. Uh, and I can't remember the details of how they handled it, but uh, the integrity commissioner for serious matters has said to us or to me that um, once they put this process in place, 
he has not received any requests to investigate anything. Everything has gone to the light integrity commissioner. Uh, and so uh, if, if, there is a, um, if there is a role or a person or whatever uh, that uh, you know, needs to be looked at, um, you know, perhaps there, that, that two-step process uh, could be useful um, because uh, the, the light process is a lower cost uh, process and a lower, um, uh, not as um, certified, if you will, process, uh, more like a mediator. And uh, maybe it's um, maybe the maybe the task is to uh, to put a put a mediator or whatever you want to call them uh, into that uh, IC light role um, to handle those kinds of things, so we don't ask our staff uh, to get involved. Uh, and then, um, if it's beyond something light, then it goes to uh, the, uh, the the more senior IC role. But anyways, it's a process that has been baked, proven to, to work out very well, and maybe so you know worth considering. Okay, it's like this: we've, we're talking in circles, and we've been talking in circles for a year. And I will admit, it's testing my patience. Um, and I'm sure it's testing everybody else's patience. We have to come to a conclusion. Um, and I think that what we should do based on what I'm hearing is say, okay, you've got 10 days. If you've got any input of any form whatsoever, get it to the clerk within 10 days. She'll come back next month with a report. We're going to vote on it and we're going to be done because this is getting far too time consuming. And you know, we're, I, I'm sorry, we're, we're, you know, like Council Hazelin, you just brought up for the first time in my life that I've heard of Integrity Commissioner Light and, and Heter Integrity Commissioner Dark. Well, where, where's the report? Where, uh, where, where, where's the evidence? You know, we, we, got, we need something concrete so that we as a council can make a decision and move on. So our CAO is well aware of this and I have introduced her to the uh, to, to the C, to the um, integrity commissioner that is looking after it and the township. So this is maybe new to you, but it's not new to our CAO. Um, and uh, I'll say one other thing, and this is no complaint whatsoever with, uh, with uh, our clerk way, but uh, the last time I provided a whole bunch of changes uh, and uh, very few of them were accepted. And so I think one of the concerns that I would have with uh, the suggested process that you just articulated, Mayor, is that um, you know we put our changes in uh, and then we get back the finished copy. But if the finished copy doesn't reflect our ideas um, and we don't see it in advance to be able to have a further discussion with the clerk as to why the changes aren't in there, then we're going to end up again with a document that doesn't reflect things that we think were important um, and we don't have the opportunity to ask why until that meeting. So we're, we're in the room here. Um, the last time I received a lot, a couple of written comments, the issue was most of the written comments were conflicting. So if I only received one idea from one person, I collectively took the ones that were consistent themes throughout the comments received versus not picking on any one person, but there was multiple comments received. Um, and so if they were inconsistent with everything else that was said collectively, I didn't include it. Councillor Douglas. No, okay. All right. Um, do we postpone this again? Is that what is that what a couple of councillors are basically asking for that we postpone it again, Councillor Douglas? Okay, I I really feel that you know as our clerk is, or, or our, our CAO has just indicated, send in all the changes that everybody wants and make it final this time so that it comes back and she's got them all and we get a final version and do this at the beginning of our our next uh, cal meeting. That that's my. And, and if, if we can get that to the integrity commissioner to look at it for a comment, I, I think that would be appreciated by a few of us and, and primarily 
on the point of whether or not she can accept a um, the the duty or what she feels about having um, what do call it mediation and whether she would it would be her that would do it or if this is something that is even part of uh, the job of an integrity commissioner. That would be my thought. Councillor Cooper, followed by Councillor Rianco. I'd like very much to have this come back uh, to the next council meeting for passing. And yes, we should get our comments in. Um, I am sorry, but I'm not particularly in support of having the integrity commissioner driving the bus here. I think we as council are driving the bus and uh, the integrity commissioner is to enforce uh, under the law, certain aspects of code of conduct. Uh, we've, we're developing a process here that is, uh, I think our process, and uh, I would recommend that uh, um, as long as she can work, maybe one of the things we can give her is uh, have her work with the portion that she's to look after, not not what we've uh, advised in terms of the steps that we might want to go through. So thank you. That's that's my opinion. Councilor Rianco. In my opinion, is that I'm I'm not I'm not fully on board until the, uh, we get comments from the integrity commissioner. Uh, I'll go along with the recommendations when I hear her comments and that's, you'll get my support then. All right, here's what I'm going to say to council. Today is May 11th. I'm going to say you have, if you have any comments you want the, the council or the clerk or the CEO to consider, get them in by Tuesday, May 18th. That gives you seven days. After that, you're not allowed to bring any new input into the discussion. Councillor Hazelton. So now we're putting our clerk into a position where she's going to get input and she is going to, as she's already indicated, uh, decide what things she accepts and what things she doesn't accept based on whatever criteria there is. Um, and then we might end up being exposed to a new version where we adamantly disagree with some of the things that are there, but we don't have any opportunity to, uh, to voice our concerns. Um, so I find that to be a very uh, ineffective uh, well, no, it, process. It can be very simple. We, it, in other words, you, Clerk way could could do we could instruct her with anything she receives in the next week will be shared amongst all council so if, if councillor hazelton wants to put a 20-page report together all of us will see the report uh that doesn't mean that she's going to incorporate it into her document no it doesn't because we will we'll, she'll produce a document that we will review next month and if we say well how come point 13 and Councillor Hazel's report isn't in here. And if enough of us want it in there, then she'll have to say, well, either she didn't put it in because it's illegal or because um, she didn't think it was worthy. And we're going to say, well, we think it is. Like, we know, we got to get this process done. We're spending a year on it. And, you know, I don't think, frankly, that any of our electors elected us to spend a year on our code of conduct. I really don't. And yes, I know I'm showing a little bit of impatience, but I'd like to get this done. Councilor Jarvis. Um, may I just maybe take a little bit of the weight off uh, our um, clerk uh, if we send in our recommendations and copy everybody on them? Yeah. That way everybody sees what everybody else is putting in. Yep. I think that would be very useful. All right, let's do it. You got a week. I feel like that's direction to council versus direction to staff. So I'm not sure a resolution is required at this point. I don't think a resolution is required at this point because your resolution said we're going ahead with one or two changes. And while I thought we were gonna add a couple of changes that uh, Councillor Cooper had suggested, at this point, it's gone much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get, we're, 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 it's like we're starting all over again for the umpteenth time, but everybody's got to provide input in the next week if they want to see changes to the existing document. Um, and then from that, uh, we'll ask our clerk to do her best to pr produce something that will come in front of us next month. 
and we will try to get this thing actually moving forward. Councillor Cooper. Point of clarification, just to, in that we did give some feedback today and we did get part way down the road. Uh, Karen, are you re requiring uh, us to repeat all the suggestions that we sort of have developed today? I think in the intent of being consistent and making sure all of the ideas are shared across the board, anything that you suggested today to put it in writing in an email or whatnot and provide that as feedback. I do have notes, obviously, um, but if we're not going to pick any one of those ideas individually today, then I think it would be best if those ideas are still shared within any, whatever the comments are, however you provide that to me, whether we're document or an email point form, you wanna do track changes, I don't whatever makes you happy. But I still think it'd be better to collectively provide anything, any idea that you want to be included to provide that in, in your correspondence to me prior to the 18th. So just, I'm sorry, clarification again. So so we, we, we spent an hour or whatever, an hour and a half on this already. Mm -hmm. And and we we got some some things sort of fleshed out. We should just we're not going to capture any of that. I'm I'm trying to understand what I need to send you. I've I have sent documents in the past about this as well. But uh, uh, I hate to see us lose everything that we uh, captured today. The issue is I don't have clear direction on the ideas, and some of the ideas don't match. So if you want to provide me with clear direction, I need it all in writing then by the 18th, as, as Mayor Kutsier has suggested. I understand that that might seem frustrating if you've already shared those ideas today, but some of these ideas were brought up once, some were brought up multiple times, some were agreed upon, some were not agreed upon. So if I don't have a resolution directing me to take that idea, then I can't. My direction, by the sounds of it, is to take the written correspondence I'm to receive from you by the 18th that you will then share with your other council members. So Mayor Kutzier, I'm going to suggest that we um, give direction and, and vote on something because we spent a lot of time talking about some of these things and there's more information that will come in in the next week, but we we got uh, three quarters or halfway down the road here and I'd hate to see us back up again, so I don't know. Uh, you know I don't know what the, the, the resolution that I had in front of me was that the Committee recommends to council that we bring forward a bylaw to draft the code of conduct as presented, or that we bring it forward with one or two points added. Just vote on that resolution. And uh, if it passes, then if you want to add anything in the next seven days, go for it. All right, I have moved by Councillor Bocek, second by Councillor Rianko, be it resolved, oh, you disappeared. Be it resolved that the Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that the following amendments be integrated into a draft code of conduct for further review. Include step for IC to review complaint with Clerk CAO upon receipt of complaint. Council vote on whether IC reports are posted on Township website and council members to provide further comments in writing to the clerk by May 18th, 2021. All those in favor, Council Rianko. Can we not agree to send it to the IC uh, commissioner before the next meeting? I'd be yeah. really happy if we did that. I, I would say- And it sounds like Cameron wants to do it anyway. No. I do, I, but I, I don't I, know if our draft is Draft. I'm that. feeling it's too draft to send it to her. And we don't know quite, quite what's going to come in in the next week. This is not approving it. This is still allowing input in one more week's worth of input. But this is going to the cow, right? This is coming back to cow? Yes. Okay, so between cow and council, can it go to the integrity commissioner? I think yeah. we'll vote on that at the next cow. All those in favor of the current resolution. All right, it, that is carried. Moved by Councillor Cooper, seconded by Councillor Jarvis. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole does now adjourn at 3.32 
p.m. to reconvene on Tuesday, June 15th, 2021 at 1 p.m. or at the call of the chair. All those in favor? And that is carried. And that's it. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. <coughs>